guys and welcome to my channel in today's video we're gonna talk about one of the most advanced tool that it's easy to use however it has to be used properly which is the pendulum and as you guys can see I am not alone I have my friend Lara hi. with me hi how you doing um, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna cut off this one it's too cute so she's a bit shy but it's all good and the reason why Lara is here is because she is also a psychic she also has a shop where she does tarot reading as I already told you and mentioned in my other channel and she also offers pendulum reading now this is something that I saw using however I still believe that using the pendulum is something more advanced because it can actually be tricky so today with Lara she's going to demonstrate how to use the pendulum I'm going to ask her question about why is she's so accurate what is her process and what we can learn from it and I just wanted to mention that in my e-course where I teach you guys how to read tarot I have an entire section in that e-course on how to use the pendulum but in case you cannot afford that this video is also for you guys so let's get started so the pendulum how exactly the pendulum works is basically you hold still just show it Lara one second you hold still a pendulum which can be used like if you don't have one you can say you can use a necklace with a crystals or sometimes when I'm out and about I just use necklaces <laughs> like oh should we go to that club or not <laughs> shit we don't have the pendulum just bring on the necklace and we actually did that and people think that we are absolutely crazy but that's another story so you literally you can use anything that you can hold still so Typically, what you will do, you will connect with a spirit guide or an angel. Now, we're going to ask properly, Lara, in a second. Um, it can also work when you are talking with your subconscious because what you have to realize is that our muscle do move in a subconscious way, even if we don't notice. So this is why the pendulum can become tricky because sometimes it is really hard to discern are we really moving the pendulum subconsciously or are we actually talking? with the spirit guides and angels and this is why me but also people like Edgar Casey, one of the greatest psychic of all time said that the pendulum is definitely more of an advanced tool so now for Lara, we did an experiment in this last month yeah. and we noticed that she wasn't really like, we were asking questions to the pendulum through her end and through her way of doing that we didn't even care about. So we didn't care whether it was a yes or a no, uh, things about people that were not really involved with us emotionally. So we couldn't really control the answer and she was really, really accurate all the time and I'm going to show you a couple of examples actually let's let's mention it like I remember one day uh, we had to go to a party right yeah. a sort of party and I said are we going to meet this specific person and my pendulum said yes because I was thinking about that particular place where we had to go and funny story is her pendulum said no and I was like how come and explain why it said no it said no because we were we ended up not going to that party to that and place to that place exactly <laughs> but funny story is the person i was inquiring about was in that place that night so you can see how much the pendulum can be tricky yeah. however can be very accurate and in perspective to the future she's been actually more accurate with the pendulum than me because she predicted through the pendulum that actually we weren't even going to that party so it didn't even matter whether that person or another person was there that we were asking about we weren't going so the answer was no i think that's because i was thinking to the place and she was thinking exactly. to, about the person so exactly that, that's, Her that's pendulum it. said exactly. yes because she was thinking about that person and uh, that person was there uh, but I was thinking about the place and he said no because we ended up not going there. So you see how tricky it can be? Now I just want to ask you Lara, um, how did you start it with the pendulum? Why have you chosen the pendulum let's say over tarot or over another tool? And yeah let's get started with these two questions first. Okay, so. I started really young, I was in high school and it was just for fun. Uh, I think I read it um, about it online, uh, and I, I used to use uh, a necklace, just a simple necklace. Um, and I used to ask things about school and <laughs> will uh, I pass the exam? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I was really young. I, I think I was like 16 years old. 
So uh, I wasn't thinking about how uh, important uh, and um, how serious the pendulum is because you are talking with a spirit guide and of course the spirit guide doesn't want you to ask silly questions uh, because you're using the pendulum in the wrong way. However, spirit guides, like, they can see that you're young. So let's say that you're very young and you're just specifically asking um, about the exam like she was. Nothing bad is going to happen oh. to you. They, they are, you know, intelligent enough to understand the situation. Um, and so you started working with the pendulum and you have immediately noticed that you were accurate. Yeah, I was accurate uh, since the first time I used it. But uh, when I was young, um, I started um, asking too many questions because it was fun to know what, is, what was going to happen in the future. Uh, so question after question, it started to not being so accurate anymore and I stopped for a few years uh, because I thought that I wasn't uh, really gifted or good with the pendulum. Right. This is very interesting that you stated that because I always bring up Edgar Casey, and Edgar Casey, like I said, was one of the greatest psychic of all time. And you know, he was a channeler, so he knew about all the divination tool. However, he didn't need it. He was just going to sleep and channel from spirit guides. However, because he had this urge to help so many people, he was channeling so much that the angels told him, "Listen, you need to do at least ten clients a day. That's it. No more than ten." And it happened that some of his predictions weren't accurate and many oh my god how do you say uh, hypothetically uh, thought that he wasn't accurate because he was overly stressing the channeling abilities so that's a very important point that you guys need to understand about the pendulum and about any divination tool once you get like an answer from the pendulum or from the tarot or whatever stop asking for the same questions because that is when some other energies might come through into the reading because your angels and spirit guides are always going to be very consistent so this is also how you discern when you're also using the pendulum if you're really talking with an angel or spirit guides or let's say another entity or your subconscious the answers remains consistent the answers remain the same and the more you keep asking the more you go farther away from that vibration because what you're doing vibrationally you're doubting yourself and the answers that you're getting so you came back years later to the pendulum yeah. and uh, how exactly do you move the pendulum how do you know that you're not moving it yeah so basically I hold it with my right hand and I put the left hand underneath it but what I do is first of all I always ask if I can um, ask a question because um, I, I don't want to start uh, the pe using the pendulum thinking and giving granted that I will have the answer. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, he wants to be part of all the videos all the time. Go ahead. <laughs> so I don't want to give granted that mm, spirit guides or whoever is, uh, is answering my questions is going to answer because they want to. Uh, so I always ask, can I uh, ask you a question? That's so very pendulum, interesting. Can I ask you a question? And uh, if it says yes, then I proceed with uh, asking the question. If it says no, I wait uh, some hours and uh, this is very interesting because I have never do that like I only do a prayer and then I'm like you're just gonna answer me. <laughs> you're just gonna answer me which I am not like I'm accurate with the pendulum now after years and sometimes I'm not like the, the, um, the examples that we had before because I'm much more accurate with the tarot and with my channel just pure channeling and this is a really good idea so let's explain uh, for a second okay so you basically start and say can I ask you questions having in mind your relationship with your spirit guide I, yeah, I assume yeah. and then basically show them how do you receive a yes how do you receive okay. a no and all of that so for example um, what I ask is um, pendulum can I ask you a question you see now it's saying yes so the first time you use your pendulum you should ask the pendulum um, what's your yes and what's your no so you know that whatever move is doing uh, is a yes or a no. 
exactly because for us it's similar which is which is odd because sometimes <laughs> it's different but for us the yes goes in a rounded like in a circle clockwise motion the no it's like up and down and the maybe it's like this but you on the other hand could have a completely different way of moving the pendulum so just ask like she said initially what it's my yes and you write it down what it's my no and you write it down what it's my maybe and you write it down then usually a common question that people ask is like can we only ask yes or no questions with this movement yes however like I explained in my e-course where I teach the pendulum there are so many other ways to use it for, for instance you could use it on a map to find things that you that are lost even you can let's say you've lost something in your house you can do a map of your house and the pendulum would swift over that place where that hello <laughs> where that thing is lost like you lost that key you're just gonna ask the pendulum right and then uh, for instance you can have charts charts about your energy levels so let's say you, ah, you can even ask instead of yes or no do i have the energy for doing a reading today do I have the energy to do the, how much is my energy? How many percentage is my energy? And many psychic use it in this way to analyze whether or not they should do a video, they should do a, you know, a reading to, to see their level of energy. So instance, even in meditation, you can use the pendulum and just ask, uh, how is my vibration going? What percentage is my vibration? So let's try to ask like, how much is your percentage of vibration? Okay. Let's say, um, is it 100%? I think it's too ambitious, but let's say is it 90% okay. of energy? Okay, so I will ask if it's 90% Exactly Okay, so uh, it's my energy 90% uh, at the moment Yeah, <laughs> that's, because, that's because it's morning time and she didn't work yet <laughs> Let's see if I ask like 70% Okay, okay, go uh, ahead It's my energy at 70% now See? And it's a and no it says no Because the yes was the 90% So tell me a few episodes that really shocked you about the accuracy of the pendulum So I asked several questions about my mom's boyfriend job and uh, it was really accurate because um, he gave a really unexpected answer um, and uh, basically he said that he wasn't going to have a working contract and uh, he ended up being like this but he's like doing little jobs um, in some places and then in some others so he doesn't have like a um, real fixed contract Exactly, the and then he said because he was waiting. I remember for a phone call yeah. on on a Monday or something, mm -hmm. and so I don't know who asked, but it's like, is he going to receive this phone call in Monday? And the pendulum said no, and then Monday was gone, and he didn't actually yeah. receive the phone call. And she was like, my pendulum is accurate, <laughs> and I'm like, that's great. Um, another way that Edgar Casey, I actually, if you want to know all of this, you can read his uh, biography. I have a video dedicated on the books that I. Had and her case he said one of the way to measure, measure whether you are accurate with the pendulum is to ask at least 10 questions and then check up on later in the future if at least 8 to 10 you got accurate responses if you have 8 to 10 Edgar Casey used to say that you must most likely like it's a very very accurate tool let's say that you have 6 out of 10 is still accurate though we're, we're more in the average like you're averagely accurate if it's 7 to 10 it's good you know medium score not too impressive if it's 10 out of 10 you're nailing it so try also this like I always say whether you're using the crystal ball crystals the tarot the pendulum write it down have a diary a book of shadows where you write down your responses because you even with dreams because you want to make sure that you are a little scientist of yourself so you maintain that healthy skepticism that is going to help you improve your abilities and later on it's going to verify whether or not you're actually accurate so you can give readings to other people with confidence because otherwise you always remain up in the air am I going to be accurate because I assume Lara the more you were seeing that you were going to be accurate the more you became confident yeah, about the pendulum yeah. 
once you see that you are uh, like 80% accurate with your pendulum, then um, you become really confident. I am not afraid to ask questions for others. I think that when I ask questions for others is more accurate than when I ask them for myself. And because I am detached see. from the, the, exactly. the question. I'm not exactly. emo emotionally involved with the question. Exactly. And this is why the pendulum amongst all the other divination tool is an advanced tool because of the level of detachment that you need to have if you're reading it for yourself. Remember what I said at the beginning. There is the subconscious movement of your muscles. Even like with something like the Yuiji board, there is that subconscious movement. However, you can use it for yourself. You just have to be a little bit more trained so the way I explained for instance in my e-course is even when you're doing tarot for yourself however tarot it's easier because with tarot the cards are just flopping they're just jumping out so you're not really controlling them right but even with the tarot or with any other divination tool you have to try to imagine yourself like an external reality like you're asking the questions for a different person and the more you're going to practice detachment from your own identification which is the essentials of yoga and meditation the more you can do readings for yourself and be extremely accurate actually you can even become more accurate than any other psychics when I do most of the time readings for myself I am more accurate than any other psychics apart from a couple that I already suggested like Lara but seriously like I don't know why people find hard to read my vibration but when I do it to myself because I, I got this idea of I'm not reading for myself. I'm reading for this girl that she's called Neya. She's called Virginia and she's having this and this and this problem. It just becomes so much easier and so much more accurate. Then I just wanted to ask you another question is sometimes the pendulum, do you think it's not been accurate? And if, if it, the answer is yes, how did you react to it? If it wasn't accurate? Yeah. Uh... I find out some, sometimes it's not accurate when I ask questions for myself because maybe I'm too involved with the questions, it's something that I really want uh, and uh, it's normal to, to be sad. <laughs> That's so cute, it's normal, it's normal to be sad. <laughs> but you know, uh, the important thing is not to be obsessed with the questions, so if, it, if, if it's not accurate then maybe you should stop asking so many questions and uh, just... Uh, and take a break yeah, and take, take a step a break. back. And on top of it, for instance, I was very offended with the pendulum at first because, you know, with my ego, with my fabulous ego, I thought, I'm, I'm, I'm a channeler, I can use any divination tool and it's just gonna work and karma obviously bites me in the back and um, and so I got very offended with it but then I realized by the fact that I wasn't that accurate with the pendulum initially and still I'm practicing with the pendulum that it's not everybody cup of tea it's like many people are afraid of the UEG board however there are many people who had wonderful experience with the UEG board the UEG board is not everybody's cup of tea the pendulum is not everybody's cup of tea there are people with tarot that are disastrous it's it's not everyone's cup of tea. There are people who do not know how to read hands or find palmistry very boring. When I started reading palmistry, I was shocked about that, that I was good at it because I was like, I, I, I could have never imagined. I thought the pendulum was more my cup of tea. So I feel that studying all this divination tool, it's going to be very useful for you guys to discover yourself. What really works for me? What sensation about my own intuition I can trust? Some of you guys it's not even gonna be about divination tool it's gonna be just your gut feelings for some others of you your dreams are going to be spot on for Lara it was very much I think you're very good at tarot Mm -hmm. With the pendulum, you're extremely good. And then the dreams is something that I feel you got you got into it lately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think dreams are more... Uh, I don't dream things that uh, really happen in the future. So uh, I don't think I can predict the future with my dreams. But it's like um, I can see 
the current energies of what's happening true and you and this reminds me of the fact that you can see it through your dreams however you can you you just can feel it you're very much going to the gut feelings when i ask you what do you think about this mm -hmm. like i just remember forever that was uh, there was a thing that happened to me without getting too personal and um and, and we were together, okay? We were always together out and about doing damage. And uh, this thing that happened to me kind of crossed my eyes. And I was like, Lara, that's it. It's over. It's over. It's never gonna happen ever again. Like, it's done. And she was like, no, it's not over. And like this, it was like, no, it isn't. Because I always take the piss out of her that she's got like the resting beep, beep face. Or like a cat face where she like she looks badly about everyone but she doesn't mean to yeah. and so she was like no it's not over <laughs> and i kept going on over and over again and i was like no it is like you don't understand like i can be even like quite annoying i was like you just don't get it <laughs> you just don't get it it's the end i'm gonna have to change town it's, it's forever and ever over then i go back home and something happened that she said and i was like lana you were right <laughs> And it was so funny and it just tells you how much you can interpret energy. Sometimes we even do this this game where we don't know where to go and we want to hit the best club or the best thing. I know, I know, we shouldn't be that, that shallow, but sometimes we are, it's life. And I'm like, I don't even tell her where to go. Like, I don't tell her the places, but I think about them and I'm like, and she goes, one, two, three. And I said, let me pick a number and think of, about the place. Yeah. And I think about it and she said, I don't know, two, whatever. Ends up, was the best place to go. <laughs> so that's how much psychic ability can work. And so to Tuning into the pendulum, try all of this different divination tool and see what works for you and write it down. Be a little scientist of yourself until they're gonna be probably opening schools or yeah. things where we can actually learn <laughs> this stuff and not be completely like experimental about it in our lives. So do you wanna add anything just to conclude the video yeah, about the pendulum? I think there are no rules. So if you like that. just do what you feel, it's it's right for you. Uh, just be um, um, be conscious that there's a spirit behind the pendulum so uh, don't be disrespectful and respect if the pendulum is not um, is not moving because sometimes it happens to me as well <laughs> it's true that's a really good point sometimes yeah. I had moments when it doesn't move and I couldn't or interpret it really slowly and uh, I'm like come on come on come on move right. move, move and then I think okay but if there is someone behind it then maybe there's not enough energy at the moment so I, I should I should stop and just ask later or, uh, or maybe do you think that it doesn't move because sometimes you just don't have to know the answer sometimes you don't have to know the future because you will do something that I don't know kind of twists no, the event no I think that if if something is not uh, is not um, sure in the future it's going to say maybe the pendulum that no but maybe you don't have to know in mm. that sense like let's say if you will know that if you go there like i don't know you go there and you know that the outcome of that situation you will react differently than if you don't know okay yeah in that probably sense. yes yeah and another thing that i want to mention it's about timing what do you think about timing? Because sometimes timing can be extremely accurate, like it was for that Monday phone call. And yeah. sometimes it, it just, it's weird. Yeah. What do you think about? I have my own opinion, but then uh, you go ahead. I used to think that I could ask about timing, uh, like specific timing, like the day and the, the hour. <laughs> the hour, the second. Uh, spirit, give me a second. But... Um, I find that I found out that it wasn't so accurate <laughs> at the end <laughs> because this is a bit about releasing in my opinion the attachment like she was saying not pressurize the pendulum material or any other tool and what I always say do not get fixed on time because spirit guides and angels live and reside in a place where there isn't any space and time so when they tell me 
very soon. Most likely it's gonna be six months, which is not very soon, but they don't get it. So I argued with them over and over again and I left the battle because it just, it, they feel six months is very soon, a lifetime. It's a lifetime, it's nothing. You're gonna get incarnated again. What's the big deal? Cause over there, it's everything happens so quickly. You want something and just immediately gets manifested. So when they tell you it's, it's gonna happen, for them, it's already happening. You're there waiting. It's like, what the heck are you talking about? And it could happen in five years, believe it or not. So you don't even want to end up disappointed knowing this and arguing with them. So try to ask very broad time. Like you can ask, let's say very soon, and yeah. you will know that you have a time frame from one month to six mm -hmm. months. You can ask within a year from now. That's pretty reasonable. But I, yeah. I find it accurate to ask also like within the month, maybe right. it's going to happen yeah. this month. Okay, yeah. maybe it's going to be like, 50% accurate, 60% accurate. But if I ask, it's going to happen tomorrow, then it's not going, it's probably not going to be accurate, to be honest. <laughs> and it's not just a pendulum in this sense, it's even dreams. Like I had dreams of people that I met after two years. So it's like, what do you have to do with that information? You know, just deal with it. You know, so time, it's very, time doesn't really exist. It's a matter of perception. And I have a video where I talk about time is real or maybe not so go out and check it out to understand better the concept of time and recently I have discovered which it's completely out of topic but I just wanted to mention it for my Indian followers which already know this but Kali my favorite goddess in Sanskrit means time oh, wow. she is the perception of time but if you think about Kali you don't necessarily think about time mm. so how come that she's time because she's the eternal void yeah where there isn't really the concept of time. She's death, she's the, it's like time, it's not framed in that linear way like we think, but it's framed in the transformational point that we experience. I know, it's, that's, it's, that's it's so mind blowing, it's mind blowing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lara, for coming along. I'm going to put the link down below to her Etsy shop. She does budget friendly, like much, much less expensive than my reading, Sarah reading. And for me, she's been super accurate. Every time that I have to ask her something, I also go to her. She's very, very accurate. And she also offers pendulum readings if you guys have a question, yes or no, or if you want to try this modality. And I bet that she's one of the only one that you're going to find most likely online that it's actually accurate with this tool because like I said most of the time being inaccurate with this tool it's 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 everybody like it's very hard to find people that are accurate with the pendulum and do you use the pendulum let us know in the comment section down below let us know your experience and this is just our perspective and our opinion yeah. we do not have to be right but we love to share this knowledge with you guys and let me know also other videos that you want to see on this channel thank you so so much thank for being for here and having me. hopefully <laughs> another video we'll do another video let us know if yeah, you want her want <laughs> in another video thank you Bye.